Hey guys, it's uh, Crick Shasin here, back again from CNH Small Engine. I got a uh, quick uh, review video here for you guys. Uh, we, we were uh, working on a lady's tractor here this past uh, couple days over here. Uh, she was originally complaining the machine was hard starting and, and was having an extremely low idle speed. And we've checked it out because she recently bought this thing as a used tractor, unfortunately, uh, from a person who would not return her calls after she had the purchase. And unfortunately, he did not give a warranty, receipt, or any of the sort right there for the machine. So she called us up and she need, needed some work done to it. And what needed to be done was, unfortunately, need a new carburetor, new fuel line, new fuel filler also need to be tuned up. The tank had about uh, one quarter of the actual bottom of the tank here. You will not believe it. It had water and sediment inside and she knew nothing of that and all she did was just simply pour gasoline in the machine every time she used it or i should say, should say the only time she used it because she only used it one time and the thing was acting up the whole time it would not uh, rev up it kept on idling extremely low and she was trying to use it and trying to engage the blades and deck and stuff like that so she called us up have us take a look at it and we put all the work on, we actually we put all the parts on, like the new carburetor and tune up and everything else like that on the machine. And the reason I got it taken apart right now specifically is because uh, it was running extremely, extremely slow on high speed. And it looks like the person who were sold to her uh, was monkeying around with it right here. And I'll show you where um, you actually have to adjust to get the high speed up to where it should be because this machine right now, um, I'm, I'm not actually going to show it running. I'm, I'm just going to show you where it actually has to be adjusted specifically to bring the RPMs up to spec. Uh, these machines should be running probably around 32 to about 3,300 RPMs specific, uh, just specifically. And I'll show you exactly where they have to be adjusted on these machines here. So let me get this camera situated here. Okay, guys. See right here with your actual linkage here for your um, choke mechanism. Well, your choke mechanism goes down to a, another plate right here. You see this plate right here specifically. Well, this plate also has a little small triangle-shaped tang right here. You can see that right. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. Sorry about that. You get a better picture for you guys. And this is what it is right here. You have a little triangle-shaped tang area. And there's a spring hooked onto it right here with a little black arm is pointing right here. Well, that goes down to your governor above the governor where it comes out of the engine right here and this thing was almost bent uh i'd say it was bent about it was it was bent down about a, a quarter of an inch lower than what it is right now in order to increase the rpms on the high end this thing must be bent vertically up you want to bend this thing up so what you want to do is you want to get a pair of pliers and you want to stick them down inside here and grab it grab the actual triangle shaped piece right here and you want to bend this thing up slightly and what you want to do is you want to put the whole cover back on top of the engine and fire it up after that and uh, by doing that you should bring the rpms up to where they should actually be usually between about 32 to about 3400 rpms on these typical engines like this one right here uh, what i what i use over here to actually test uh, your rpms and on the machines uh, given load either like high speed or low speed uh, this is what I use. I use a uh, TAC or a TA500 Smart TAC plus COP tester on here. It's a multi uh, system ignition t analyzer specifically. It's made by General Technologies Corporation, made in Canada. And what you can use with this thing specifically is you can test uh, the actual spark plug wire, you can test the actual COP, and you can also uh, vary between uh, cycles of the engine, specifically the two stroke uh, diesel and four stroke as well too plus the other thing on the other side here is to calibrate the actual uh, peak volt uh, milliseconds for the burn time plus your rpm you can actually flip uh, them around in three different positions right there for that and that's how i use after we get done testing to make sure the machine is going to be running adequately at a specific given rpm right here for that so anytime you get an engine like this right here specifically this is a uh, 18 horsepower Intec overhead valve engine. I'll give you a, uh, a picture of the actual uh, valve cover right here as well, too, for reference. So here you go. It is mall number. Let me see, zoom in on here a little bit better. Sorry about that. It's 31H777297E1 with a date code of 2005. So it's a uh, 2005, so it's about almost, almost 12 years old. So that's everything you need to know, guys, about how to adjust your uh, choke, or I should say the RPM speed setting to the actual high adjustment right here. As like I said before, just follow your linkage back 
from your choke mechanism right here. It's on top of your carburetor. Follow the uh, cable back to this angular piece right here. And you'll notice on the inside of it right here, right next to the engine block, you'll see a little triangular shaped tang area sticking out right there. And what you want to do is it has a spring hook to it. And you want to bend this tang arm in the up position. You want to bend it up slightly because you want to make small adjustments over the course of your adjustment right here. You do not want to bend it completely up because if you do, your RPMs might go up like 6,000 RPM. You might blow up your engine. So bend it up in very small increments over about five or 10 minutes while you test the machine because you want to put the engine trial back on the machine after you get done testing the machine because if you do not, the engine will not be able to cool itself properly and it'll possibly melt the engine down because of the inadequate uh, cooling of the engine by not having the actual shroud on the machine right there for that. So if anybody has any comments, questions, whatnot, feel free to uh, leave me a message here and I'll try to get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. I'll see you guys. Have a nice day.